listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, with your host, Vivian Bell. Great day. You're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes. I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am She Who Believes. Well, if you've been listening for the last four weeks, you already know what's next. But if you're new to the show, we're going to read our verse. Honestly, we're doing a little more than just reading a verse. We're actually declaring the word of God over our lives. I hope you'll join us. Our verse is Luke 145. This week, I'm reading it from the Amplified Version. And it reads as follows. And blessed, spiritually fortunate, and favored by God is she who believed and confidently trusted that there would be a fulfillment of the things that were spoken to her by the angel sent from the Lord. Now, what we she's do is we replace the word she with our very own names. You can read any version of this verse that you choose. I've just decided to read this version this week. Are you ready? Let's go. And blessed, spiritually fortunate, and favored by God is Vivian, who believed and confidently trusted that there would be a fulfillment of the things that were spoken to her by the angels sent from the Lord. It's very liberating to speak the word of God and to hear your own name when you do so. I want to encourage you to not allow anything to invade your mind in this process because there is no sin in inserting your name into a verse in the Bible. You're making it personal and real for you, which is actually what God has intended for each of us to do on a daily basis. He wants us to take him at his word and to believe every last promise and know that they are indeed for us in this day and time. Now I'm sure by now you've guessed that we're going to talk about love. Those who truly know me know that love that I love to love. I love bringing joy and encouragement to others. I've always been this way. However, there were certain times in my life that I regretted being so loving. Time after time of being mistreated and taken advantage of, I wanted to be angry and respond like almost everyone else did what I saw others doing. I would find myself saying, man, I really need to stop loving people so much or being so forgiving. Maybe I'm just a little too kind. Well, that was until it happened, until I found the love of my life. Now we're going to take a short break. And when we return, I'm going to tell you all about him. His love has indeed changed my life. Well, we're back and you're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes. Again, I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am She Who Believes. So we left off with me telling you that I have found the love of my life and that it has changed everything. Well, he's really amazing. He is always had he always has a word of encouragement for me. He speaks life and blessings over me every single day. I mean, every day, ladies, he misses not one day. He opens doors for me and he calls me by my name when we're in public. He is not ashamed of me, even though he knows everything I've done in this world, good or bad. He wakes me up with a call of hello, beautiful, every morning. Throughout the day, he will encourage me and lift me up. We fell in love when I was a little girl. He loved me before I even noticed him. He showed me that I should never regret loving. And because of his love, I love every single day as if I have never been hurt. Well, I want to go ahead and introduce you to him today. He's with me right now. His name is Jesus. He is the perfect gentleman. He is a comforter. He has opened so many doors for me and there are so many more to come. I don't have to strive for his love or his approval. He adores me. I mean, he just adores me. And today he wants you to know that he adores you as well. His love has changed my life. He taught me to never be ashamed of loving people, even when they hurt me. And even when it's purposeful, that I should not ever be ashamed of the love that I have for others. Now, boundaries for sure have been a blessing in my life. I've learned to find the good and goodbye. But I've never again regretted loving unconditionally, for it is not foolish to do so. In fact, it's actually having a heart like God's. 
Now, for those of you who are afraid to let down your guard, oh yes, you. You know you, the one who's quick to tell everyone off or to keep others at bay with your words and your rudeness. Oh yeah, I went there. I know what it is to hide behind all of our defense mechanisms in order to protect ourselves. When the truth really is, we're simply afraid to love again for fear of being hurt. But the word of God tells us that perfect love casts out all fear. 1 John 4, 18 um, in the New English Standard Version actually reads as follows. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. It is indeed love that perfects. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Now, what I usually do is I head directly in the path of the thing that fear tries to keep me from. I found that when I do, fear has to leave and the very thing it was trying to keep me from becomes my greatest blessing. The word tells us that God is love. Not just that he loves, but that he is love. The essence of him, he is love. Now, I know that some of you are listening right now and you've thought, but God can't love me. Well, I want to tell you that not only does God love you, but he also wants us to use our hearts to spread his love in this earth. You're right. I don't know what you've done. And because of him, I don't look like the things that I've done. Nor does God even see those things anymore. Because his love allows him to separate my sins and your sins far away from us, as far as the east is from the west. He chooses to remember our discretions no more. Still not convinced? Well, if you give me just a few minutes and on the other side of this break, I've got a word just for you. We're back in the home stretch of this episode of the podcast, She Who Believes. I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am She Who Believes. Now, today we're talking about the love of my life. And before we left, I told you that I have a word for you. Well, it's this, love you. Now, how is loving you and finding the love of your life all tied together? Well, I'm glad you asked. The love of your life, God, created you in his image meaning he created you to love. Once you have learned to love and embrace yourself, then you can be the conduit through which God's love is spread about on the earth. This is the love of your life, the love that you give to yourself and the love that you give to others. You are uniquely made in the image of God. You have no competition. There is only one you who can do what you've been called to do in the way you've been created to do it. That's why you are called to it. Be confident and rest assured that God did not make any mistakes when he made you. He does not make mistakes and he cannot lie. Embrace who you are and refuse to allow the trials of this life to close off your heart to love. Now I know your coworker may be trying to do everything they can to get you fired. Love them anyway. I know that your spouse may have cheated on you or just plain old isn't doing what he should. Love him anyway. Now, I know that sounds a bit over the top, but consider this. A person can sometimes only give you what they have. Although their actions towards you may be wrong and hurtful, choose not to be offended and choose to love past it all. Now, I must mention boundaries again, but know that boundaries are different than walls. Boundaries will allow us to love ourselves while still respecting I'm sorry, boundaries will allow us to love others while still respecting ourselves and requiring others to do the same. Walls keep everyone out and lets nothing in either. It closes your heart to not only giving love, but to receiving love, even the love of God to the fullest. Now I wanna share the following scriptures with you before we close. Romans 8 and 1 in the King James Version states this, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The Lord wants you to know 
that there's no condemnation for the things you've done previously. You're now in him. So walk according to the spirit without condemnation. He, he died for that. He pinned all of that to the cross. Don't allow condemnation from your past to keep you from moving forward and from being that vessel that God sends his love through into the earth. Romans 8 37 says, nay, and all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors because of his love. His love sent him to the cross to die for us, to shed his blood, to redeem us. We're already conquerors. We fight from a place of victory, not to become victorious. All because he loves us. Romans 8.35 states, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? Or persecution or famine? Or nakedness or peril or sword? He's saying, no person, no thing, no action, no event, no loss, no anything can separate you from his love. It's impossible. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that loved God, to them who are called according to his purpose. He's working all things out for you. Continue to trust him. Continue to love. Now the following scripture is one of my favorites and it's Song of Solomon 8, 6. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most venomous flame. Love is strong as death. So many people see death as like this strength the strong thing that takes life, but really it's not. But even in that vision of what you think death is, love is still stronger. Now I'm going to end with this scripture, reading it from the Amplified Version. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. And it reads as follows. If I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love for others growing out of God's love for me, then I have become only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, just an annoying distraction. And if I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand all mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have all sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but do not have love reaching out to others, I am nothing. If I give all of my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it does me no good at all. Love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful, and it is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things, regardless of what comes, believes all things, looking for the best in each one, hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. Love never fails. It never fades nor ends. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. And as for the gift of special knowledge, it will pass away. I want to encourage you today to surrender your heart to God so that he can heal it and then use it. Then the love of your life, which is the love you show to others, will go forth into the world, pointing others back to Jesus, who because of his love for us, has given us the gift of salvation through grace. Well, until next time, I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am She Who Believes. You've been listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, where we encourage you to stretch your faith and to believe God for the impossible.